All right, there we go. Can you hear me okay? Let me know. It might take a second to uh, patch your voice in. Usually it's like a couple of seconds dead space, but uh, I feel like now it should probably be good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome, perfect. Uh, and you're ready to go, ready to kick it off. I know we had a little uh, technical difficulties. It's uh, bad on the learning uh, curve here, but we won't have that mistake again. But uh, you ready to go here? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. Let me just uh, give me a second. I'll do a little intro here. All right. Good evening, everybody. Anyang Haseo. Hola. Bienvenidos. This is the Talking About Life podcast. We're going to pretend it's 8 o'clock, but in real life, it is 8.07 right now, and we are getting it started. Today, we have a guest. Always happy to have a guest on the show. Uh, that guest is VR Verdict at VR Verdict on Twitter. Twitter bio, we are a VR podcast that focuses on talking with game developers to share their games and stories of development. We host our show live from within VR. However, Tay, we are flipping the script. Uh, we've got them on our podcast where we talk about people's passions, uh, what people love doing, you know, their projects, their endeavors. So today we've got VR Verdict. Like I said, very grateful to have them on. And we're going to find out, you know, who are they? You know, what are they doing besides the bio? Dive in a little bit deeper. Uh, and what are they passionate? about vr verdict you know what's going on and how are you doing tonight doing awesome glad to join it's always interesting to be a guest and not a host <laughs> yeah i could imagine it's a little funny uh, being on the other side of the table yep <laughs> so yeah just um again thanks for having me i'm here to talk about whatever we get into and uh see what happens yeah, so I mean, why don't you tell me, you know, a little bit first about, you know, your podcast? Like, what, what, you know, at, at some point you had no podcast, <laughs> now you do have a podcast. What, what is kind of the, um, the path or the road there, or the inspiration, and then of course geared around your passion. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, hopefully, this is something you're passionate about, not something you got like forced into. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that'd be um, awkward. Yeah. So tell me, tell me how the passion kind of led from zero to a hundred, or however, you know, however you want to phrase it. So it actually started with another podcast um, six or seven years ago. Uh, my brother, my co-host, my current co-host is my brother, and uh, our friends. We played a lot of um, Xbox online, always laughing our you know asses off. Um, I started listening to podcasts, and they became a thing. I'm like, hey, we 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 make each other laugh. We can make people laugh. So we did a podcast, totally unscripted, about nothing for like six years. Um, Kind of started. What podcast did you listen? To what inspired you? Um, all the Kevin Smith podcasts, like the Smod Co, that grew into a bunch of other things. Tell them Steve Dave is still going strong. One of my favorites. Um, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, after six years, we kind of started winding down, and people stopped. Um, um their friends start stopped showing up. So, uh, my brother Wookie and I did a VR episode on our old podcast and because we just got into vr and and that was very quickly our most downloaded episode ever so i'm like oh that's interesting so we kind of looked in the space and there was only one podcast about vr i'm like uh let's switch gears and get going on that so that's what we did and um what was the episode um just to kind of flesh it out a little here what was the episode about vr that you did about like obviously it was about vr but a specific game did you just get a quest headset or the oculus if it was called that at that time uh yeah actually um it was kind of it was the oculus rift cv1 we got into first and we just kind of documented what we had to go through to get into vr because back then it was even more confusing than it is now um for, you know hardware and what's out there type of thing so we just kind of wrote down what we went through and kind of shared it and went through all the quick fixes and easy things we found to try and help people get into VR quicker. Was there a game you were playing? Like I'm, I'm pretty new to VR. So you could, you can kind of, you know, talk down or educate me a little bit oh. here. Like, no, no, no offense. Um, I've, I've tried, I've been to a few game convention things. I've tried on some headsets. I did like some underwater thing once. It was kind of nice. cool, but I, I, I haven't put on a headset in years that was much closer to when they were first coming out. And I feel like they're ahead of that now. Um, when you tried it on, maybe it was a little bit, you know, before now, but it was probably still ahead when, of when I tried it, I would think. What 
you know, what is the attraction for most? Is it a game? Is it just hanging out in a social space? Like what, you know, what sparked your interest or passion? How, what, what sparked my interest the first time I put a headset on and just being in a totally different world, like instantly and just realizing like the space you're in because the, the presence in VR is, is pretty amazing and you can do a lot with it. Like there's so many use cases. Um, so it's different for everyone. Like, you know, there's gamers, there's people that like, we've talked to a lot of people that use VR for like um, health reasons, whether it's like, you know, fighting depression, you know, all kinds of, of different things you can do with it. It's pretty amazing. Like I'm a gamer at heart. So that was kind of why we got into it. But when we talk to people that are doing things other than gaming, it, it actually is more interesting to me than gaming, which kind of blows my mind. So it's very strange. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, I kind of didn't even know that was part of it. I mean, maybe some part of me heard that or something, but yeah, can you, can you dive into that? Cause that, that's interesting. I think to me, as much as it is to you, uh, well, m maybe more to you, but like depression people are using it for, like in what way, like, and, and I'm, I'm just kind of picturing like, is it someone who like, it can't leave the house for some reason and they're pretending they're like, what? Yeah. What is it? So it's kind of all of that. Um, it, you know, it, it really blew up during the pandemic where people were isolating and, you know, couldn't hang out with people. This was a way for them to hang out. Like my brother lives in North Carolina and I live in Wisconsin and we hang out. And we, it literally feels like I'm in the same room. So it's it has that aspect to it. But um, yeah. Where are you hanging out? And again, I'm so new to this. Where <laughs> it, So you put on the headset and then... You know, <laughs> then how are you with your brother? Like, how's what's the, so there? One there's a couple. Story. The main thing I would say is big screen. It's an it's a game app that you you literally load in and you're in a theater and there's like 40 different theaters to pick from. Uh, you can watch movies. You can share the screen and play like um, flat screen games on the big screen. Um, you can throw things at the screen. Like it's just super interactive. Um, that's probably the one we have a lot of fun on. You know, in a good in a co-op space. So you both have that game. You both load up into, and that's how you find each other. Yep, and you you literally feel like you're sitting next to them in a theater seat, and you can you know see the arm movements, the head movements. Um, if your avatars are really good, it, it really adds to it. Um, what kind of what kind of avatar does he have? Well, it, each app or game kind of does it differently, so they're always different. Um, but, um, trying to think, I'm, I'm really bad with names. So when I try to, have to remember crap, it, it slows me down, but, um, um, alt space VR, it has like pretty, pretty realistic avatars. So like, I haven't seen my brother for five years now. We used to visit each other every other year and taking turns going back and forth, but you know, pandemic slowed that down. So the first time I saw him, he has he has really long hair and it's like fire engine red. So the first time he popped into alt space with kind of looking like himself, like I felt like I was really seeing him in person, which, you know, after five years, it's kind of crazy, but um, yeah, it's pretty neat. Wait. So his avatar looks like him. Like personally, it's not like a cartoon animal, like an NFT or something. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's a little, it's, mildly cartoonish but the features are all there if you take the time to put them there and, and it really looks like you can really make yourself look like yourself if you want to okay so you're almost like a me emoji or something <laughs> like that you're customizing yep, it yep. like skin tone hat correct whatever else what other other features eyes you know all yep. that and then okay cool so it's it, right so it's how much attention to detail and then i guess the parameters so like a character creation on a video game kind of thing it's similar to that exactly Do you know is there anything something i'm interested in as an idea because to me it's theoretically possible because i don't know how big into gaming you are it seems like you know you are and then there's other things but you know i played tony hawk <laughs> pro skater or, no tony hawk underground 2 i think it was nice uh one of the tony hawkings i think it was thug 2 or thug 1 and i had a fucking playstation camera and this thing fucking scanned my face yep. and put me into the game from scanning me. and you, you remember that shit yeah yeah that was big into uh like um i think it was a rainbow six game did that way back on the n64 or something too yeah that was nuts perfect dark did it okay, too there you so it's like, right, I think that was PS2 I was on, N60. So it's like, 
okay, that sounds fucking amazing. Like, that was revolutionary to me. Yep. Like, and everybody <laughs> thought it was cool. I don't think anyone didn't like that. I don't think the feature fizzled out. I think some people didn't have the camera, and then it was like, oh, that's really cool, but I can't afford that. Now everybody's got a fucking camera on their phone or somewhere, and instead of, like, like where did go like is that anywhere like has that made its way into this fucking future of the metaverse because it's like that's such a major miss in my opinion is it harder than i think on a technical level do you have no idea which is fair too um so back then they actually started thinking like oh maybe we shouldn't have children shooting their friends in the face and i think it kind of hurt that but yeah there's nothing stopping it from coming back um i mean i enjoyed shooting my friends in the face so (laughs) but I was probably a little older at the time than they were thinking, you know. That makes <laughs> understand it's a decent point. It's like a psychological thing. You don't yeah. want to. Yeah, okay. So that's why it was in Tony Hawk. But okay, so so even if I'm fucking with that, though, then no theaters. Like, come yeah. on. So the, the big theater? Sorry, what, what is it called? Big theater? Big screen. Big, big screen? Yep. What, what, big screen. Let, let them let them know. Get that in there. I don't know. If, you know, if, if, if you talk to more people who... Uh, you know, are doing VR stuff. You you have more influence, I think, in this uh, realm or this industry than I do, at, or at least at the moment. Did, throw it out there for me. Oh, yeah. That's I, a request. Obviously not a command, but... I, I'm not a programmer by heart. Um, my brother is a little bit, but um, I, I always say, like, With I have proof. a thousand ideas I can share. I, I don't care. I want people to make the games I want to make, so I can share ideas all day long. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, we could go into that, too. Yeah, I, whatever you want to talk about. It's, it's super free flow here. I could always find questions, but, you know, I love to find kind of, like, the tangents where it's, like, you just kind of hook onto something. <laughs> so, you know, you sounded pretty excited about, like, the ideas you have. What what ideas, what other ideas do you have besides, uh, you know, scanning yourself, in, which I like? <laughs> um, right off the top of my head, not ideas, but just, like, game types. Like, I would love to um, have a game where you're riding on a stagecoach and just defending the stagecoach, where, like, enemies are attacking you in VR. That would be pretty nice. And um, one of the biggest things in VR is locomotion because, you know, there's many, many ways to do it, but that's kind of where a lot of people can get motion sickness. So any game where you can create it, where you can just sit or stand and you don't have to like really move around, do really well. So I think that would be a really cool thing. Um, that's my main idea. But I, I also kind of, I love riot shields in, in games like uh, Call of Duty. So I want like a two-person co-op game where one guy is literally holding the shield, the other guy is kind of standing behind him with a gun, like just a handgun, something simple, going through levels and, you know, working as a team to get through it. Those those two things are like my biggest things. Um, the third one, the other one I'll share is like a hide-and-seek game would be amazing in, in, in VR or even a, like a prop hunt, like Call of Duty used to have a prop hunt where you just all change into different objects uh, and kind of hide in the one person that was it would have to kind of figure out who was what type of thing. Um, sounds weird, but once that you once you play it, it's a blast. Right? Oh, that's not in there. Nope. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that seems like an easy one to do. Yeah, <laughs> I did hear that uh, Among Us that just came out in VR that's been out on everything else for a, a while is bringing like a hide and go seek mode. So I'm kind of excited. Yeah, hide and go see could be fun, or like a manhunt, or yeah, something. Like that. Yeah. What is uh, what is your favorite game right now, or or if not game, or like I know you, I know you like the big screens, like that's like where you meet up with your brother. But is there like a solo experience or anything like that, like a like is something you know just you would just do if you know he wasn't around? Yeah, my my all time favorite VR game to this day is still um, Asgard's Wrath. It came out on the Oculus storefront for PC VR. It's like a forty hour, uh, pretty epic adventure where it's first person and there's you know different weapons. It's kind of like a mixture of um, kind of like a Skyrim with like a with like a Nordic theme to it. It has all the old gods and stuff in it, but. Um, you can zoom in and out on the landscape and go to like shoebox. Uh, my favorite thing in VR is perspective. So when you can go, you know, the size of an ant to the size of like a giant in the same world, it's really neat to me. And that game kind of lets you do that and do a lot of crazy things with it. So, so you could go, you could change your size in the game, like like size of your character, like like Ant Man kind of thing. Um. Not so much that, but you kind of explore an area and then you go into 
I'll just say God mode for ease. And then you see the whole level you were just running around in, which is pretty huge in like a sandbox mode or like a diorama. And you can like, there's like puzzles and like you could pick up a tree as a God and place it across a ravine, go back to first person, run across it type of thing. And then, so it's like a puzzle, uh, it's like a puzzle game? Uh, it's it's mostly like combat, like Skyrim, but there are like puzzles you can do to unlock things. It's and Skyrim, but yeah. like, yep. yeah, I'm trying to picture it. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No problem. I'm just saying you. It, it's mainly like combat, like sword and board type of stuff. Um, there are some magic spells you can have, but in the environments, when you zoom out, there's like other like hidden paths to find and stuff like that to explore, which is really neat. Interesting. So, so you're like leveling up as you like combat and through. So it's like a. Is it? I'm I'm trying to like compare it to another game, like a like maybe like a Diablo or like a Zelda or like like I guess if you had to compare it to two like other popular games that I might know because I don't know if I'm picturing it right and obviously I'm just picturing it. But um, like what would you compare it to? Like Skyrim, you said I know. Yeah, but I would Skyrim's mix. Skyrim's so it. open world. Skyrim's so <laughs> hard. Like Skyrim, there's the vampire shit. You could become a mage. Yeah. <laughs> you could do like the thief thing. Like, is it is it that open? Like, like I, I can't like, I don't know. It's hard to think another game has that much like versatility in it. Like Skyrim is so big. Like, yeah. Like it really is like Skyrim. Like, well, like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't not believe you, but it's like hard to believe. The, like, I'm thinking, is it more like an aspect within Skyrim, or is really like that open? It's kind of like the same combat and world, not to the same level, but it's it's a mix of like Skyrim combat and detail with like God of War action, I would say. It's kind of a good mixture of the two. I'm going to I'm going to have to look into this again. What is it? You said uh, Guardians Asgard's, Asgard's Wrath. Sorry. Yep. Asgard's Wrath? Yep. And the whole thing is VR. So, so what are what are you looking at yourself like? Like, like in the VR games, is it all the same thing? Like, do some of them you see your body? Do some of them you see like your body and hands? Like, how how is that as? Like yeah, they're all different. Um, most of the time, it's you see your heart, your hands. Some of them will have like a full body for you. Um, there are third person um, VR games which are really neat, and there's different like aspects of that. Um, yeah, I can tell you. The first time I was playing a game, and it's kind of a more of a hidden gem. I can't even think of the name of it. It was so long ago, but I was playing a female character, and I looked down, and I had, um, you know, I had the female anatomy, and it kind of blew my mind because they they bounced a little bit, and it was just like it was so weird. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny. Yeah. Just looked down. You just had a big old pair of titties. Yeah, and I was just like, whoa! Like it just kind of made me think for a minute. Like this is different. Like literally out of body experience. <laughs> Did it feel right? No, it felt kind of disturbing. But um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that brings up an interesting point that I just considered. Like I wonder, I wonder if that's a way because. You know, it, it's twenty uh, twenty twenty two here mm-hmm. in the world, right? We're moving into twenty twenty three. There's, there's, a, oh, everything is a spectrum, right? Not a binary now. No. And, you know, some, some of the spectrum is gender, right? So if you, if you have a surgery that's often irreversible, it could be interesting though. Like if you feel a certain way, but you're like, you know, and I, and I don't want to offend anybody or speak from, for anybody. I'm, I'm saying this as empathetically as possible, but I think maybe it would be a cool thing for someone who's like, not sure they want to go all the way through with it, yeah. but they think they do to have this period where they could go and be in a VR environment and interact there. And maybe that, you know, answers the question or, you know, builds the comfortability or makes them go, actually, I don't like this. Or, you know, they have the experience you had where you're like, oh shit, like, I, well, not that you thought you would like it at first, but I'm saying if someone thought they would like it and then they look and they're like, I don't know, I feel weird or something. Or I don't know, I think that's really cool. I, I, so now I kind of get what you're saying about someone with like, you know, not a gaming interest in mind um, using it. Are there are there other examples of things like this that you have that you like? Like, n- now I'm kind of interested in that. Like, yeah, I only ever really <laughs> thought of VR as game, but I'm kind of getting what you're saying. Yeah, Rather there's... Um, around, uh... So there's, there's all kinds of apps, and a lot of them are free. Like, just the other day I did an experience. Normally they're called an experience if they're not a game. Um, where it was... Uh, you you got the experience of walking home as a female late at night after like being out at the bar or a party or something, 
And it, it, it really hits hard because, you know, like I said, the presence of VR, like you feel like you're in that situation. So they had you walking home and, you know, different people were cat calling and just the different scenarios you'd run into. Like it really makes you stop and think like and experience what that's like. So, you know, maybe you can treat people like humans instead of objects, you know. It, there's a lot of use cases like that. Like there's a really good... Um, um, and Frank experience, uh, I highly recommend. That was one of the first things I did in VR. Like, there's so many of these little experiences like that that just really open your mind and your Wait, eyes. What was that like? Going to that, what was the Anne Frank experience like? Um, it's basically um, you kind of just hiding, uh, you know, um, in the attic, and you know, hearing things underneath you and people rum- rummaging through the the house that you're hiding in type of thing. Like, it's pretty surreal. Like, <laughs> um, a similar, do they, do they, get, like, do, do they, do, like, do you go all the way to like the prison camp? Like they shave your head? Like, no, this how, was how a, graphic to- this was a pretty short, pretty quick thing where it was just kind of like, that was the experience. Like you never got found or anything. It was just kind of, you know, relaying the, what it would have felt like to be in that specific scenario. Um, another scenario like that, like um, they took all this old World War II footage and audio and made it into a VR thing where you're like in a bombing plane while things are happening and you hear all the audio and you see what's going on. Like it, it it's pretty crazy. Like that's what I love about VR. Like you never know what you're going to find. And that one they're using real footage? Um, real footage, it, there's parts... Uh, the whole video, like everything you see, they created, but the audio was actual audio from what was really happening in that plane at that time. Um, yeah, that's fucking true. Yeah, it was it was pretty insane. So yeah, that's the stuff I've, I've run into. Those kind of things that really make you uh, really make you feel like you honestly you feel things like you maybe wouldn't run into in your own life. Blowing my mind. Yeah, <laughs> my, my my fully blown dynamite dynamite set charged and exploded. I, <laughs> I I'm just picturing like I don't even know what I'm picturing. I'm picturing so many things. I'm just like this is a whole category. It's like someone just showed me the internet for the first <laughs> yeah, time, and I just really? found Google. Like yeah, like like I I could have experiences. Like I could have other people's experiences. Like and then there's ones that like I guess are limited, right? Because like some some experiences you you need physical like. I don't know. I guess I guess you could like watch certain things. You know what I mean? Like, yep. like you you don't want to watch someone petting a cat. You want to pet a cat, right? Exactly. Like, <laughs> or I don't know. Maybe you do want to watch that. Whatever. To each their own, right? But, yep. But I'm just picturing like so. So, so I'm like my head's just exploding. Like I'm I'm thinking, what don't I want to do because it's physical? What do I want to do? What experience are they? like like would I want to be on the moon? Would I want to do like an open heart surgery? Like yeah. do I want to be behind like a, a Formula One car? Do I want to like take a class where like I'm a chef and I'm like learning to cook and maybe even like dude, imagine you like do like a VR class and you cook something. And it's hooked up to like machine hands somewhere, and you don't have to leave your house. And they send you what you cook yeah. with, with the fucking VR. Like, bro, <laughs> oh my god! And that's I'm going wild right now. That's what I love about VR because there's so many devs doing those kinds of things, like just crazy things. And what blows my mind is they're not making a lot of money doing it. They're just that's what they want to do. That's what they want to see, and they're doing it. And it's just like. The ballsiest thing I can think of. Well, you know, one of the ballsiest things I can think of. Um, another thing, like one of my favorite, all-time favorite things that I've found is art. Like uh, we've talked to Rosie Summers on the podcast. She's amazing. Um, Wookie and I have sat in on some of her classes, but she can. She goes into a, a VR program. She has, you know, paint and paintbrushes she'll just start whipping the paintbrush around and you won't even know what she's doing. And then all of a sudden she'll like move her hands together and the whole thing will zoom in around you and you'll just be in a, in a piece of artwork. Like she did the, um, I'm going to forget the name of it. Um, the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, wardrobe movie. She did the wardrobe and you literally like, she painted a wardrobe. She opened the doors, you know, zoomed it out and then you went into the wardrobe. She painted the entire like 
world and zoomed in and you were in that freaking world and it was like minutes like she was just whipping it together it, that's the that stuff blows my mind that is an experience how 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 long did that take her before it was actually something where you felt like you were inside of something recognizable like 20 minutes <laughs> That's wild. And is she and it's it's all freehand, so to speak, yep. or is it AI generated somewhat the art or you're pulling in clip art or it's all freehand with you know virtual paint. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of amazing too, because yeah, there's so many possibilities. If if you're an art and I'm an artist, um, you know, I I I, I it's not it's not my life, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's it's something that I wish was my life or you know, I wish I was like a podcaster artist and not, you know, just a crypto travel in the world doing that. <laughs> but I have a day job and this is something I'm building towards. Right. Yep. But I can still picture this idea of, you know, I don't have the money for buying all these different sorts of mediums. And there's there's an aspect to that with the iPad and having different brushes. And that's really cool within itself. But I agree. It adds this extra layer of it where you could kind of maybe feel like you're, you know, holding a piece of charcoal rather than just. A, a stylus or something yeah you know like some some of these uh things i've seen are like tactile or they're like gloves and it's like yes there's nothing in your hand but it uses vibration and haptic feedback to make you feel like you are gripping something so you know mediums that you can't afford to express through or spray paint if you you know if you have like a lung issue and you can't use spray paint yeah. like you know, but you want to like feel like the the nozzle or pushing down. Like it's totally different. It's you know, I've I've used spray paint. It's totally different <laughs> having a can of spray paint than than using a stylus to imitate spray paint. It's just yep. it, I don't I, I don't want to say they're not comparable, but comparing they're it's a very different scales. Like maybe you could get the same looking thing, but you know, you smell the paint when you're spraying it. It's a whole experience. And like yeah. maybe you won't smell it in VR, but to hear the hiss and the and the spray and the haptic feedback if you could get that going. Yep. That's something that would excite me as well. Yeah, it's pretty surreal when the, when they really nail the the coding side and get all that stuff working together. And and audio in VR that's like the older headsets are my favorite just cuz the audio is so much better cuz it's built in. Like that just adds that whole other layer of immersion to it. Yeah. Now, the more I'm getting into this, I'm wondering how dumb I am not having one of these yet. <laughs> like I'm kind of almost waiting for like, you know, a bigger one to come out. Um, well, is that reasonable? Like, I feel like the one hasn't come out. Like the one that everyone's going to have, like hasn't hit. Like, you know, there's a PlayStation's working on one. Facebook has one out. Apple's rumored to have one. Like, yeah. I don't know who's going to win the <laughs> VR wars, but I'm like, I feel like I'm waiting. But now I'm like listening to you and I'm like, should I be waiting or should I just get one and just expect that I'm going to need to get another one at some point? So what, what do you think? What do you, and what do you have now? So right now in my room, so you started with you up here? I have, um, riff CV one. I have a quest one, a quest two, a PSVR one I'm waiting on the two to come out. Um, and to answer your question, like, I think the, the quest two is probably safe to get. As in, if like if you're gonna call one of the current headsets the one, that's the one I would say, just because you can link it to a PC if you if you have a PC and you want to do that. But I look at the but not not waiting for the um like you just said you're waiting for the the PlayStation VR two. If I if I like that sounds like it's almost imminent. Like you know that's not rumored. That's I've also heard about that. I, does that I don't know if that has a release date. Yep, but February. I have you, you it know, reserved. <laughs> It does have a release date. Yeah, it's uh, in February. Uh, you can uh, you can reserve them right now. So. Yeah. So is that if I was gonna be between that and the Quest Two? So which one would you go for? It's a tough call because you have there's a lot of fanatics, and I learned use that term loosely in VR, where if there's a cable involved, half the people don't want to hear about it. They don't care. They want a cable, which I can see both sides of the story. Um, <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Like cable, no cable? What? what so, like, it like what? a quest, like it's it's all encompassed on the headset. You're not connected to anything. I take my quest outside and run around the yard, and it, you don't have to worry about tripping on a cable. Um, the older headsets and the PS2 or the PSVR2 coming out in February has a cable going to the PS5, 
So you're kind of tethered. Not, I don't think it's a big deal because I just have cables running across the ceiling. Um, doesn't matter to me. So it's all on what you're looking for and what kind of um, experience you want to have, really. So like when I say I have the PSVR2, you... like that's not my end-all, be-all headset. I just know there's some cool stuff coming to it. So I got to have that one, too. <laughs> No, oh, I get that. What it? What is the? I guess the argument for no cord is not tripping and being free. That kind of came across. What is the argument for the cord wanting that? So, overall, I am a, a PC VR person. Just um, so cables and everything, because what happens is you have the power of whatever computer you have powering it. Where the standalone headset with no cable, it's running off a cell phone uh, ch- chip, which they get. They, there's a lot of really neat, good stuff happening, but you just cannot match all that's going on on PC VR, if that makes sense. Now, the Quest 2, I thought you said you can link that to PC. So does that do both or no? It does. It's still um, it's still a little limited. Like, you're not going to plug it in and get the exact, like, graphical fidelity you would out of a PC VR headset, but it lets you have both worlds. Um, you can also, if your setup's decent enough, you can stream it wirelessly. So there's options for, like, that's why I'm saying that Quest 2 is probably the the one to have right now that does everything um, very well. Not not perfect or, like, the best, but overall you get... And now you have, you have both. What is, what is the price point Quest 2 versus the PlayStation 2 one you've reserved, if you know off the top of your head? So... Quest Two just went back, went up a little in price to uh, three ninety nine, um, and the uh, PSVR Two when that comes out, it's like five fifty. Um, so you know, there's a there's a lot of technology like the screen, the resolution, the um, comfort options. Um, you know, there's a lot to consider for each headset. So it's it's kind of a personal thing because, like I said, there's. Um, People, different people get nauseous really easy. Like my wife puts on a headset and doesn't even do anything and she'll get nauseous. Um, there's people like me where I, in, in VR, I can run around on skyscrapers, jump 400 feet in the air and spin around and not get sick. Um, you kind of got to work up to that. So it all plays a part into like what makes someone nauseous. There's a lot of speed bumps in VR, or like hurdles in VR. That's why it hasn't really caught on fire like it should Um so it's all. I don't want to speak pompously and be disproven by reality later, but I love like playing games. I feel like there's no way I would let myself get nauseous, and if I was getting nauseous, like I'll fucking I'll power through that shit, <laughs> fucking grit my ass through that shit. That is not a factor that's stopping me. I'm not saying like I can't. I I can make my body just like like it won't happen. Like one, I think maybe it won't happen, but two, if it does, I can't control that. It's just a biological thing. Fuck that. I'm beasting my ass through that. Yeah, and, and no the- way. I'm not. doing and some people can do that. Like my wife, like I said, she gets nauseous, but she, she, watching a movie that has a really fast action scene can make her nauseous. So she's not really a good right, example. She's not like a hardcore. <laughs> but when I first. She didn't grow up on college. Yeah, well. exactly. <laughs> we can play Mario, but she can't handle that. <laughs> um, so when I first got into VR, like there, there weren't a lot of warnings or anything. So the first weekend I had it, I was in that headset like 14 hours straight, three days straight. And I went to work Monday and it was so, it was kind of surreal. I felt like I was outside of my body and just watching my body move around, trying to control it like third person. Like, and then once that passed, I've never had a problem again. So there's a thing called VR legs, which a lot of people, you know, there's some really good steps and documentation out there. If you do have problems, you can really work through it pretty easily. And then, you know, then you're fine. So it's kind of different for everybody. Like going on a boat. It's like going fit. You said VR legs. I thought yep. sea legs because I've exactly. been fishing before. Yep. <laughs> and it's uh, it's the same shit. You just, you just got to fucking adjust to the the rocking of the fucking boat and whatever. And yep. Yeah, you know, you feel something, but you know, right? That's my point. Like, yeah, sometimes I feel a little bit of the nausea fishing, but fuck that. I'm still gonna go fishing in. Fishing <laughs> is fun. It's fucking great. Uh, eating a fish you catch, whatever. You're vegetarian, vegan, then you don't. But I don't know if you ever caught something and eat it. I'm not a big hunter, but. I, I get the idea of like you caught it, you eat it, you cook like yeah, oh, yeah it's cool like <laughs> whatever. But that's an IRL thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good fishing games in VR. They're pretty fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can well, you can't eat it, of course, but yeah. 
I can imagine. Oh, that, that's what I wonder, though. Imagine you could. Imagine there was a fishing game, and it hooks up to a fucking rod somewhere, and it and it catches the fish, and there's, like, there's a, a, either a computer or a guy that pa- cuts it up, packages it up, sends it to you. Yeah. How did, like, the connection between the virtual and the real, like, you know, maybe that's way further out, but that's the shit I'm dreaming about. Yeah, I, I think that's coming with um, a lot of the, the pass-through cameras on the newer headsets where you can see the real world while you're playing stuff in VR. Like all the the mixture of AR and VR is coming out. I think I think that we're getting closer to a lot of that. So, do you fuck around with AR at all? Um, I have a lot of dev friends that'll send me stuff like, "Hey, check this out! I did this," and a couple of them like they're released on the store. Anyone can grab them, and a lot of them are free to check out. So I, I play with that stuff. I don't. I've played with some VR things on my phone, but I don't like mobile gaming hardly at all but there there is some cool stuff you can do so i've dipped my toe in a few times but i'm not really hardcore into it but i'm looking for it ar actually ar is essentially pokemon go to me is it <laughs> anything beyond that um yeah it all depends on the the person the developer who's doing what with it like um like I have a friend who makes all the cactus games in VR, and he put out an, an a mixed reality one on the Quest where you can scale. It's like a third a th- third person game, and you can scale it the size of the map to your room, and you can like walk around it, and like the enemies will shoot crap at your head and the character. So you get it's kind of interactive, um, but you can see your room while you're playing it. It's really neat. Now, question about the ones where you can't see your room or even in these, like, have you ever had an accident with these? Like, have you ever, you know, tripped? You said you run them over the ceiling, but did that come from an accident? Like, or you just had good foresight or have you seen or heard <laughs> anybody, you know, you obviously with other people, your brother's into this, like, are people fuck? Like I've seen, and I asked this, I've definitely seen this shit. I'm just wondering if you have experience with it, but I've seen people like fucking hunt their toddlers, <laughs> like God forbid, but it's like, and they're okay at the end of the video. And so you yeah. laugh, but it's like, holy fuck until you see that they're okay you know it's like yep. have you had any uh of that shit i haven't personally like i'll bump like when we're doing the podcast and if i have my my little laptop table in my gaming room too close to me like i'll bump it and then i'll move it <laughs> and then that's about the extent that i've had it um uh when i first got into it like my my cat like when I'm in my gaming room, she is like at my feet and she'll just like lay at my feet so when I got into vr at, at first Took her a while to realize. Okay, I can't be around this weirdo. He can't see me. Um, I did. I don't, I won't say kicked her once, but I bumped her pretty good once. Um, so now she. I have like uh, in my gaming room. I have the the floor is padded all the way around, and there's like a walkway around it. So she knows to stay in the walkway and not on the padding, and then she's safe. So. <laughs> <laughs> she she uh, she got burned once. Once once burned twice shy. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, I've seen some of those videos where people just take out, like they're playing right next to like their big screen TV or something and take it out. It's like, come on, you can be a little more careful than that. <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen, now do you have anything like that? I've seen people um, put up guardrails or have like, um, like a string hanging from the <laughs> ceiling, like not necessarily connected to a console, but just so they don't go too far? So, no, the headsets have that built in, like, that's part of the pass-through on the newer ones. Like, if you stick your head through where you create a... So, you can create a floor boundary, and you can create wall boundaries. So, if you get close to it, it'll kind of fade in, letting you know there's a wall there. Um, the newer headsets that have pass-through, like, if you were to, like, stick your head past that wall, it'll automatically turn the cameras on, and you can see the real world, if you will. Um so they have really good safeguards built in, but one of the hurdles of VR is just having enough space to really feel comfortable doing that. Um, like in my gaming room, like I have a lot, like I have a, my PS5, a Series, Series X, my big screen, my computer, like right on that wall. So I put like a double notch on that wall so I know that's that wall, but on the opposite wall, I have a huge collection of Legos that I don't want to take out. <laughs> So I'm kind of living a little dangerously, but I've never had an issue. So um, I trust the the, the built-in guardians and safety features they have. It seems to be fine. So what are these people in these videos? They just they have that shit turned off, or or were these features non-existent at the beginning? Um. So 
with the two mobile headsets, Quest and Quest Two, um, that was a thing. I mean, you could turn them on. Um, I I don't know if some of those I you know you question are they real? Did that person just do that to get that video? <laughs> Yeah, I've watched some of that too. Some of the more extreme ones. But like, how is that kid okay? I can tell you, is that real? Is that real? like horror in VR for me is a whole different world. Like, I can watch any horror movie, do and go to a haunted house, and I don't even like twitch. But in VR, like that stuff hits really differently, and like I still haven't been able to play a, a horror game all the way through. So that stuff I can see, like something scaring the bejesus out of you and you're just flying into the corner that i get but the other stuff um kind of makes me wonder <laughs> yeah some of the videos are the scary ones so that yeah. i forgot about that that is believable like because i might have the same thing man like you know you want to be tough but like you know who's gonna say they've never been scared yeah. <laughs> and they'll never be again or something might fucking get you but that's where i was talking like audio comes in a friend of mine um created um I'm going to forget the name of it. I think it's don't don't anger Bobby or don't upset Bobby. It's it's just this really quick little horror game and the music, like this guy's really good with music. And like, I couldn't even get past the menu screen. The music was that good. Like I'm out, like I'm just freaked out. <laughs> That's just there. So yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could, um, Horror, horror has the most likelihood that I would fucking break something mm-hmm. in my house. Probably, probably like a garage. Like I have a garage. Other than the fact that there's like some equipment and shit in there, like that's that's probably a good place to do this. No? Yeah, yeah. My uh, nephew plays in his garage. Other than the fact that winter, it's you know it's not <laughs> yeah. heated. It's like cold. Out. Uh, you know, like a space heater or something. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta think about this. I've been wanting to get into VR for the longest time. And I just kept feeling like, yeah, we're not there yet, but I feel like we are like almost there. Or maybe we are there now. Like, like all of a sudden it's getting my attention lately, you know, NFTs, the metaverse, yeah. all this shit. It's like, okay, like, you know, there's more to come and it's going to be insane five, six years from now compared to like one, two years from now, I think. But still in the next one too, I think, I think it's a, maybe a mistake I'm making that I, or may, I, I don't blame myself not getting it up until now, but I think if I just keep sleeping on it, I think I'll be like, ah, fuck. I wish I like saw some of that at the beginning. Yeah. I think there's plenty of, you know, whether it's gaming or experiences, whatever you're kind of into, I think now there's plenty on all fronts of that to where you, you'd be happy with your purchase and, you know, you'd feel like you got value out of it by enough to do with it. Um, and there's, now, um, go ahead. Something I had to work, uh, back around to to ask you, but well, I, I meant to ask you, you. You were doing some like workout stuff, I think I saw in some of the videos you were posting. We hadn't really touched on that, like the whole fitness. Oh, side. sure. You want to tell me about that? How does that work? Yeah, so there's a lot of great apps. My favorite is um, it's called Supernatural, and it's been out. Um, it'll be three years in this this April, coming April, because it came out on my birthday, weirdly enough. Um, and they were actually. On our podcast, they were the first guests we had, and, and it was such a fun conversation. So Supernatural um, started with you have a black bat and a white bat, and these targets come at you, and you break them. But they have a, a group of choreographers that set choreography and workout to music, and they do they have a great range of music. They, have, they go from, like, heavy metal and, and you know, alternative rock which is my bag to you know the other side of it like hip-hop and like they just have a great collection of music they set these workouts to um and they have trainers that they're doing the workout with you in vr like not at the same time but they're recording it while they're doing it so they're giving you you know up-to-date instructions like hey don't forget to breathe and this stuff like that but i you get a 30-day trial so when it came out, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this for 30 days straight, see what happens, because VR was kind of newer. Um, like, let's see what can happen. And, and I lost, um, I don't remember the exact amount, but it was probably 20, 30 pounds. Um, not, not in that, and not in that month. Calis- <laughs> What's that? All these workouts, these are all calisthenic workouts? Yeah. And um, so, yeah, it's mostly cardio. Um, they've added boxing, and they have a couple other things coming out, but... Like at the end of the day, at the end of the workout, and I try to hit an hour, but you can do ten minutes, you can do an hour. I'm sweating to death, and it's it's a great workout. 
Um, and there's um, other apps that like you can just wear the headset and they use hand tracking where you can do the normal like old school stuff like push up, pull ups, you know, Russian twists, all that stuff. And that's great too. Um, it's just when I get the headset on and that's the hardest part is getting the headset on. Once that music that I like kicks in, then I, I can work out for hours. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty um, pretty surreal. Like the music, just the choreography, like you you really get a decent workout. And um, it's just a good time. I really enjoy it. Does some of it have like an equipment component to it? Like... Like I see you like slashing these things. Like, like, do you hold like little hand weights like that are like one pound, or you just hold the things? Like, 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 I guess I'm wondering like, is this a workout? Like when you're like, this looks fun as fuck. But I'm like, I'm like, no, there's no way like you're working out like that. Like, is that a workout? When you're when you're, it says get get super at get supernatural, and then there's these things flying at you. Look like you're on a beach, you're in a fucking volcano. There's these shits flying. You got these swords, you're like slashing the shit out of these things. Yep. Like that's a workout, or that's game ones i think it's you said it's a workout. that's a workout no? yeah they they target different like there's different that's a cardio or like that's yeah, all cardio um but like they target different muscle groups and they like i said it's all choreographed really really well so like they have like they'll target your your abs or like there's they just added like knee lifts so you can lift your knee up and it registers it um but yeah you're 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 definitely sweaty and winded at the end of it Looks like it's too much fun to be a workout. It's like it's like there's no way this could be good for me. This looks so fun. Yeah, every I'm like watching you. I'm, like, I'm watching the same clip over and over. I'm like glued to it. I just <laughs> I was scrolling on your thing for a second just to like kind of picture uh because I was like oh I think I, I think he posted against Supernatural. I was like what was that again? And I'm looking at it. I'm like this is dope. Yeah, and like I said, so there's the choreography. It's it's amazing. Um, the workout's fun. The coaches, you know, there's a wide range of coaches. There's six of them, but. They all have a really good sense of humor. If you listen to our 23rd episode out of, we're like about to hit 140. They, like I said, they were our first guests and my God, those people are just fun. <laughs> so it's never a bad time. Like that's, it's just too much fun. Like you said, to work out, but that's how I've been able to, to keep at it. So. Fun people, fun project. I guess it, it tracks. It makes sense. Yeah. I'm. Uh, it's like, it's like, I don't know what, you know, I, I spent so much money on other stupid <laughs> bullshit. I don't know why I don't think I could just spend $400 and worse comes to worse, <laughs> even if it sucks. It's like, all right, well, I've done that how many other times with, like, worse things that, like, I got no enjoyment out of or, like, was a fucking rug pull NFT or something even stupider. So it's like, <laughs> how how have I not just committed on this? I'm, I'm, I'm probably after today, like, I'm probably within months of, like, getting one of these things. I would, I would, uh, I would wager here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, dude, this is stuff. If you or any of your listeners ever need recommendations, hit me up. I'll, you know, just tell me what you like and we'll we'll find something for you. Or if you need a buddy to play with, like I'm always game. Like I hop on the, with games with a lot of people anytime. Just have fun. You're saying recommendations game wise, right? Yep. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. And uh, you just mentioned, you know, you you know, the listeners hit you up or something. Just time wise, here, I do try to keep these around an hour or so. We started like ten minutes in, so we have about like fifteen minutes, I would imagine, like left or so, um, to try to keep it around that. Sure. In the last, you know, kind of whatever, I always kind of just throw it to like just um, if you wanted to like promote something you're working on specifically, or like like you said, the audience hit you up for game recommendation, or if there's something you're selling, like. You know, this would kind of be the part where it's, like, totally cool to, like, promote yourself. And it's not like, <laughs> oh, you know, you're taking over the podcast. No, this, you know, I, I appreciate your time. And I also want to give you the kind of, like, mic to do anything that I hadn't asked you about specifically that maybe you're hoping to talk about or anything of that nature. So uh, just wanted to throw that out. So, I mean, the only thing we really have to promote is, like, we have merch options. Um, a friend of mine does all the artwork and another friend of mine does all of our music. So... It's all original, all really cool in my opinion. Um, for what? For for your podcast? Yep, for the podcast. And you can get shirts and. Well, why don't you? I don't think we. I don't think we said like you know why don't why don't you tell the like hey you know this is the hours that it is and you know this is the link and the the chat you know that kind of thing if you want to go ahead I mean you don't have to but I'm, sure. I'm assuming yeah just you know. uh, just <laughs> search VR verdict on Twitter and you'll you'll find our link tree and it has all the info if anything sounds good to you but. Um, yeah, we normally do our sh shows live um, Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Central. Um, 
sometimes if the guest is you know across the pond or in a different time zone because that's the fun of of my world time zones uh we'll do the show saturday mornings at like 7 a.m just so that's a decent time wherever the dev is um so it does change a little bit but most of the time it's thursdays at seven um we all we almost always have a guest sometimes wookie and i will just you know do a podcast ourselves and kind of catch up and you know share thoughts what we've been playing and stuff like that but most of the time we have a guest and we interview them and kind of show the players like how what it actually takes to make a game because like i said a lot of these vr devs are ballsy as hell they're putting like their life on the line financially to do what they love and um, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but we love hearing the stories of development and just all the the heart and soul that goes into these projects because i i don't know that just inspires me to do what i want to do so i like to share that and just bridge the gap like in the gaming world, it's unfortunate. A lot of the gamers like give a game five minutes and they're like, "Oh, that sucks." Moving on, it's like, "Okay, hold on." Like, just you know, give it an hour. Like, someone put a lot of work into this that you cannot imagine. So we're just trying to help share that and have fun while we're doing it. But that's about my biggest pitch. <laughs> awesome, I love it, and I love the passion around it. Like I said, this is all about passions. Uh, you know, people get passionate about things, even if I don't totally know about it. I I'm passionate about passion. If someone's like real fired up about something, like I don't I don't even love sports, but I'll go to sporting events because people get passionate as fuck, <laughs> and I'll just start cheering like for whatever who I'm there with is cheering for. You know what I mean? Like I just like fucking getting hype. So yeah, that's awesome. You know I enjoy enjoying this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's my kind of thing. So, you know, I'm always open. I'll have whoever on the show because I figure at some point we'll hit something and you'll y- your fire will light mine and we'll get <laughs> rolling on that. Here. And I definitely think that has happened every time I talk to someone. So that's awesome. I'm going to keep it rolling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one one other thing I want to ask you, do you want to, you know, do you have any like personal things or I don't even think I fucking asked your name. <laughs> um, I'm Ian, by the way, Ian Lipkowski. That's that's my real name. I'm Doc. You don't have to tell me your name if you're not Doc. No pressure. Um, but if you want to, my, my, I, my real name is PJ. So on the podcast, I'm PJ. My co-host slash brother is Wookie. Obviously that's not his real name, but that's what he likes to use. So that's, that's us. <laughs> Makes sense. Get PJ next to, uh, your title. That's, I was like, I don't know what PJ is. I was like, I was like, this guy likes pajamas. Yeah. Pajama podcast. I, I don't know. Not... Poonjab, pajamas, <laughs> peanut like, butter, that, jelly. The VR, <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't know. So that's your name. Um, yeah. And another question. So, and then sometimes people will share or like want to share like some sort of like, I don't know, anecdote or personal story. Like, is there something you feel that either is or isn't related to VR specifically, but like some sort of, I don't know, like paradigm or like life perspective moment that kind of like, you know, put you on this path where you were going to like, not maybe not just VR, but that you were going to become a person who does follow your passions and not become someone who takes a job that's, you know, only about money and doesn't have a balance between like the financial aspect of it and the part of that, you know, job that gets you excited or that you enjoy, you know, clearly you've chosen to make your passions and, you know, your finances and what you're spending your time on. Like, like that's all part of your, you know, life direction. Um, Usually there's something that kind of, put you there instead of the just, all right, I'll just kind of humdrum, look down at my feet, move along and, you know, end up just like, you know, working at McDonald's or, you know, no offense to anybody, but you know what I'm saying? Like just, just whatever, end up wherever kind of thing. Like, you know, what, what kind of set you off? So I'm very much a person that I need to play more or at least the same amount that I work. So I like to have fun. Um, Anyone that works with me, like knows I, I don't have a safe for work um, appropriate, um, uh, <laughs> sense of humor, um, but like you know, I never never want to hurt anyone's feelings. I'm just looking to have fun, so um, that's kind of how I I live my life. Like I have a real like air quotes real job, like a 40 hour week job, and I do that and I do it well, and I have fun at it. But I you know once I walk out of there, I don't think about it. I'm I'm doing what I love, like VR gaming, music. That's those are my loves, so that's what I spend my free time on, and um. Uh, getting into VR and meeting all these devs, I'm, you know, the goal at some point is to, you know, how can I move into that world and and make my money where I like to, you know, have fun. So that's kind of down the road. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. But yeah, just 
very much just always looking to have fun w with anyone, anytime, doing anything. So awesome. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like I said before, I have uh, you know the nine to six kind of forty hours of work kind of thing. That's not always like my exact schedule, but you know what I mm -hmm. mean. Um, and same thing, you know. I I'm also passionate. Right. I I grew up. I was playing a lot of video games as a kid. I used to love reading books as a kid. I was a bit of like a nerd geek type category, if you have to put in a label <laughs> on it. I don't love labels, but if I had to, it would be incorrect to say those don't fit. And yeah, that's what got me into it. I was always chasing my passions, and I always kind of had this aspect where like, yeah, there was the grind of going to school and, you know, getting good grades and yeah. stuff, my parents and whatever. And then there was like, well, get me the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> like, I hate this shit. Like, like, okay, I'm good at st some stuff, but like, I want, I want to fucking kill dragons and fucking meet goku and shit, yeah. like dragon ball z <laughs> and like when i watch anime and shit, a little japanese cartoons bro i fucking like i think anything could potentially be funny i i'm an empathetic person i don't want to offend anyone either so i get you on that but yeah like if you're somebody who's like super super close to me and like we're in a group of like mixed races and religions and you're like in the squad and we all know nobody's given any nope. fucks, like yeah all, <laughs> all jokes are like and like you can kind of laugh at each other's mistakes and the stereotype and like like it's all in good fun and i'm sorry if anyone feels offended but like yeah i'll laugh with people like you know i don't get it in a room with like just you know I've, i have a diverse group of friends and like you know there's a group of people who think com comedy I, I love comedy i love fucking watching comedians and shit so i never want to hurt anybody's feelings but i think comedy is its own art form and yes there's always like lines and this and that but Art of comedy is like, how do you make anything funny? Like, like uh, Pete Davidson, like his dad, you know, God rest his soul, whatever, I think died in 9-11. You know, he makes 9-11 jokes yeah. and it's like about his dad. And it's like, because that's what comedy is, man. It's, it's trying to fucking cope sometimes with life's darkest shit. And people don't realize that like, that's what comedians are. Not people who like hate everybody and like are just assholes. It's like, no, they probably went through something that like you either like cry or you find some crazy way to laugh. And it's like, a lot of comedians are traumatized. So, yeah. I, mean, I get you on that. Um, and I, 100%, VR is kind of in that same vein. Like, whatever's going on in your life, whatever's hard, whatever, you know, maybe you don't have, like, the setup to fucking, you know, move to Dubai and just buy your own fucking island or something. Even if, you know, you're a smart person, you're, even if you're good at your job, I, I consider that to be me. You know, and I, I make a decent amount of money, but it's like, no, I haven't escaped the quote unquote matrix, so to speak. I'm not, <laughs> I don't have ultimate financial freedom. I can't hop on a jet, you know? Yeah. So, but I don't think I should just give up on wanting to feel good. So yeah, I, I became a gamer. I, I embraced the fantasy. People go, oh, you're running away from reality. Fuck yeah, baby. <laughs> you're running straight out of this bitch, bro. Did you, did you think, did you think that would hurt my feelings? Yeah. Did you think, did you think you fucking had me there? Did you think you, did you think you fucking put a collar on my neck when you said, you just want to escape reality? Like, yeah, bitch. What do you, like, yeah, like you, that wasn't obvious. You thought I didn't think, you thought I was hiding that. So <laughs> I don't, that's a little tant rangent for me there, but, um, yeah, fuck, bro. fuck it, bro. Let's let's fucking virtual reality. Let's get out of this. Yeah, that's you have fucking cool experiences. Let's escape our bodies, yeah. bro. Let's let's have experiences that we're with walking home drunk at night. How much money you have fucking, you know, whatever. You you can't recreate yeah, I mean, well, I guess you could, but like, you know what I'm saying? Yep. <laughs> you, can't, you can't swap in and out of that then. Yeah. You have money. You can't put that on and off and have just an ex you know, so there's things you can't do with money. Um well they could buy a VR heads. You know what I mean? Like you get it. There's Things you could only do with virtual reality, and I love that. Show. So I embrace it. I'm with it. Um, yeah, we're we're pretty much at the end here. So, uh, like I said, if you want, if any last words, otherwise, I'll just kind of thank the list here. Um, and I feel like we'll close it out because I feel like we're kind of just coming to a natural. Sure. You know, we we got it all out. Yeah, just thanks for having me. It was great to to chat and share some stuff and learn some stuff. So appreciate it. Awesome. So yeah, once again. Very grateful to have you on the show. To the listeners, you know, anyone listening uh, on replays, anything like that, we're on Anchor, we're on Apple Music, we're on Spotify, we're on Twitter. This is obviously recorded. If you listen later, feel free to drop a comment or whatever. Let the algorithm, you know, know you stop by, a like, a retweet, you know, whatever you want to do here. Share it to your friends, people who might like VR, someone who might learn fr something from this conversation. Take a clip of it, whatever the fuck you want to do with it. Um, feel free to put it into the universe. And last message that we have here that we like to close out on. We are not sponsored by them. He's just a good friend of mine. He's at Afakazi Brand on Twitter. And his message is, you are loved. If you haven't heard it today, folks, 
You are loved. The universe is abundant. The universe is made of love. There's love all around us. Yes, there's dark in the world. Yes, that shit's all over the place. But there is balance. There is light. And ultimately, the light and dark come together. And all of it in one holistic picture, some believe, is just love. And we believe that. And you are loved. And the universe is love. And peace out, y'all. And once again, thanks for coming on the show. And if you have interest in coming on the show, just DM me. Reach out. Um, but other than that, that's all we got. Thank you so much. Love you. You're loved. And good night, y'all.